Hello and welcome to the video for how do I do animation inside of UMG changing the position using animation tracks. So I've gone ahead and created a quick example here. If I hit my pause menu button, it will pull up my pause menu. And if I click the return button, it will drop it out of sight. So we're going to go ahead and look at this example and see how I've done it. To start with, I'm going to be using the animation system which is at the bottom here. There are multiple ways of doing animations for UMG. I will cover another method in a separate video on how to do it using nodes. But this video will be covering the animation system here. To start with, I have the widget that is placed on the screen, basically inside of a canvas panel. That way I, I can do absolute positioning. In order to have access to your anchors, positions, and alignments, you need to make sure it is inside of a canvas panel. If you don't use a canvas panel, you will not have access to these and it makes it very difficult to do animations. Now inside of my canvas panel, I've created what I call the pause menu panel. For demonstration purposes, basically this is a border. Inside of the border is another canvas panel. So that way I could position everything inside of that to meet my exact needs. I'll pull it up onto the screen here. And basically you can see it's a canvas panel with some text, a few buttons, a checkbox, and a slider as a simple example. So if I go ahead and I take my pause menu panel and I put it back to zero, it will now be off of the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to animate this from the bottom of the screen to the middle of the screen. But we're not going to use positioning. What I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the anchors and the alignment so that way as it animates it adjusts the anchor and alignment to a new position and it will allow it to go to the center of the screen no matter what size of your screen. So to start our pause menu panel here I have an anchor set up to the bottom. Basically this panel is anchoring itself to the bottom of our screen. Now the actual panel itself has its alignment set to the top middle right here. So basically the top of this panel is anchored to the bottom of the screen so that way it will always be off screen. Now our goal is going to be to do this. We want to change our anchor to the middle. That'll be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0.5. And we want to change our alignment to the middle as well, which again is 0 0.5. Now if we adjust our position back to zero, you'll notice we now have a completely centered panel. So that is what we're going to try to recreate. So let me change these alignments back to the top and anchor to the bottom. Reset my position back to zero and we'll go ahead and create our animation track. Now I've created one here. What we're going to do is duplicate this step by step. So we want to make sure we have our panel selected, click on animation, and then name our new animation. We'll go ahead and call this slide in menu 2 since I already have a slide in menu. Now by default once we click on it nothing will happen and we will be at zero on the timeline. This is in seconds you can zoom in and out on how long we want our animation to last. last. I'm going to have our animation last half a second which is the 0.5. So we want our start to be here at zero and our end to be at 0.5. So let's go ahead and start. Move it to the zero. We're going to turn on auto key. What this is going to do is anytime I change a value that has this little key variable here, it's going to go ahead and it's going to set up a key. So we want to make sure our alignments are keyed. So we're going to go ahead and click our pluses on the alignment. And we want to make sure our anchors are keyed. So we want to go ahead and click the pluses on the anchors. What this is going to do is it's going to set up our keyframes for our anchors and our alignment, which is what we'll be animating. Now let's go ahead and zoom back out and we will go to our half a second mark, which is right here, half a second. And what we want to do is now we want to adjust these values to be the values once this is in our animated half second position. So let's change our anchor to the middle. Let's go ahead and change our alignment to the middle of our widget. And let's go ahead and set our position back to zero. 
You'll notice that the position changes when you're inside the editor. It's because whenever you change the anchors or the alignment, it automatically changes your position to match. It's just a feature of the layout editor. This does not happen in real time. This changing automatically only happens in the editor as a convenience feature. So if we go ahead and scrub through this, you'll notice, let's zoom out to make it a little smoother. It is going to animate from our bottom to our top. And that's it. If we go and hit play, you'll notice it smoothly animates in. We've gone ahead and created our animation here. And what we're going to do is now hook this up in the blueprint to play when we want it to play. For the demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and use just our slide in menu one since I've already got it hooked up as we walk through the grab. So how I am creating this widget is inside of my user player controller. When the pause menu is pressed, which I have bound on the input to P, I'm calling toggle pause menu. Toggle pause menu simply flip flops between on and off based on when you press it. So the first time through, we're going to go ahead and create our widget, which is this widget right here. And keep in mind when it creates it, it will be in the zero position, so it will be off screen to start. So we create our widget. I'm setting it to a variable, so I have it for reference later. I'm adding it to our viewport. All of this is normal standard stuff. I'm getting my player controller, showing the mouse, and setting input to UI only. And then I am talking to the widget itself and telling it to play animation forward, which is a custom event. In this custom event, it's pretty simple. We are using the play animation node and giving it the slide in menu animation. Now you will notice when you do the play animation, the drop down list here will not show any of your animations. This drop down list will simply show variables that are set up, but what you do is just simply over here, any animations you've created will be in this list, drag and drop, and now you've hooked up your animation. You can obviously go ahead and adjust things such as the start time, number of loops to play, and then which method it's going to play, forward, backward, or ping pong. That's it. All that's doing right there is we go ahead and pull up our menu, it creates it, and then it animates it in using our animation. Now, on the reverse, I have our return button. For the return button, I'm basically doing the opposite. I am getting our slide in menu and tell it to play animation, except in this time, playing it in reverse. I am then adding in a half second delay. You'll notice when you play the animation, it will immediately execute the next pin. There is no finished wire like on a timeline. So you need to tell it to delay for your animation time. After that, I get my player character, cast it to my player character and tell it to toggle the menu again. This time when we come back, since we're now flopping, we're gonna go ahead and remove our widget from the screen now that it's off of our viewport. I'm going to set the UI widget back to nothing. That way I have a null reference. I'm going to unshow the mouse cursor and then set the input back to the game mode. And there you go. There you have it. I'm taking input from the player, showing a menu and then hiding the menu. Since we, here's one of the nice features of animating this way using the anchor system. You'll notice when I pull up the menu, it goes to the middle. And when I close it, it goes off screen. Now, let's say, for example, we have a different resolution. Let's say it's a skinnier resolution or a more vertical for the display. Well, since we're using anchors of off screen zero and middle one, the half, it's going to animate properly no matter what size the screen is. So that is one advantage of using the animation system and using the anchors rather than fixed position and absolute positioning to get a nice animation going. Now, like I said earlier, you can go ahead and animate anything with a keyframe on any of your widgets. This was just a tutorial to show you the positioning. Positioning is more difficult because positioning requires your item to be in a canvas panel so you have access to your position, your anchors, and your alignment. That is one of the keys. If you're having difficulty with animation where you want to move something across your viewport or your screen, make sure that something is inside of a canvas panel.